Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another review in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Today I'm going to be reviewing Furious 6, aka Fast and Furious 6. Again, these titles are just really confusing, and especially with the DVDs and the Blu-rays, um, they use different titles to differentiate. But, I mean, Furious 6, okay, we get it. Fast and the Furious 6, you don't have to add all that. But this is actually the Steelbook the uh, Target exclusive, but Target and Best Buy had the same exclusive, and the only thing that was different was that it came with, uh, I don't know if it's the whole soundtrack, actually I've never even listened to it, um, but it is supposed to be, it just says original motion picture soundtrack, so I don't know if it's the whole soundtrack or if it's just a, like a sampler, I've never, again I've never, I've never really listened to it. But, um, yeah, that's the only thing that was different than, like, the generic release was it came with the soundtrack. And then, again, this was both a Target and Best Buy exclusive. I got it at Target because the closest Best Buy is, like, 30 minutes away. And, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Best Buy anymore. Over the, over the last couple of years, they've really, really downsized their products, and they've really have a, not a very good selection anymore, particularly the, the closest one to me. Um, but depends, like I have some of the, I know I have the Mad Max Fury Road uh, Steelbook. I didn't get, I had to get that off of eBay because they were sold out. Uh, Ant-Man's coming out. I do want to try and get that one because um, I really enjoyed Ant-Man. I think that comes out next week or the following week. Whenever that comes out, I'll go get it because I, I really liked Ant-Man. Um, but yeah, I know we're two minutes in, but Furious 6, um, unfortunately one of, really, one of the last, uh, Paul Walker movies, but, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, um, this one is actually the only one I've seen in theaters, surprisingly. Um, I've never seen any of the other films, not even Seven, I didn't go to the theater to see Seven. Um, again, I know I, I say this, I said it in the Five review, and I just don't, I really don't like going to the theater. I just for several reasons. Um, and again, maybe one day I'll do a, a video about that. But this one I did see because a friend of mine and I went, and we actually did a double feature. We saw first we saw Star Trek Into Darkness, which really enjoyed that movie, and the movie actually broke. Like again, I know nowadays everything's digital. I guess the computer froze or the file was messed up or something when they played the movie because it played the trailers and it played like the first five minutes of the movie and then it just got stuck and then some guy went out in the lobby and told somebody and they came in and they restarted it and then i think it got stuck again honestly i think it got stuck twice and then the third time it was fine yeah so that was kind of interesting that was kind of funny because that's never happened before and like, we were going to go see this movie, like, right after, like, and me and my friend are sitting there, like, oh, man, what if we don't make it, and we're, like, checking our watches and everything, and, um, luckily we made it to Furious 6 on time. We walked in right as the last trailer ended, so we got there just in time, which was, uh, which was good, but we did get to see the whole movie and stuff, so that was pretty cool, um, you know, luckily we made, it was just perfect timing, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, it's like, oh, yes, we made it just in time. So that was pretty cool. And um, it was, I think it was like a couple weeks after the movie had come out. Because um, it wasn't that crowded, which was nice. But it was annoying because I think it was like, there was like two girls and a guy. And they were sitting, I think, in the row ahead of us and a couple seats over. And they just wouldn't stop talking. And I think I like shushed them a couple times. Because I want to see the movie. I paid to see the movie. Yeah, I shushed them a couple times and then they were... They were quiet after that, luckily. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I do not like to go to the movies. But, yeah, maybe one day I'll, I'll do a, a video on why I don't like going to the theater. Um, but, again, there's many reasons why I don't like to go. But, yes, I know, again, almost five minutes in. But, Furious 6, let's get into the actual review here. Um, really enjoyed this one. Again, I thought it was solid. Like, 5, I thought it was a solid sequel. I actually like 5 a little bit more because, like I said in that review, in case you missed it or whatever, um, I liked how The Rock was going after the good guys. Like, he was trying to bring them down. I like that. 
And I liked how you had pretty much all the, the cast members in the movie. I liked how they brought everybody back. Because um, in this film, you know, you don't have Leo and Santos, the two Spanish guys. Uh, Giselle, played by Gal Gadot, dies in the movie. Um, Sun Kang dies. So, um, you know, I, I say, okay, they brought back Letty, but, you know, I liked how the previous movie uh, kind of got a couple scratches, but that happens anyway with steel books. Um, you know, you, yeah, you bring back Letty, but, you know, I missed the, the two Spanish guys, and, you know, I liked how The Rock was against them in this movie. But, yeah, I still think Six is a pretty good movie, pretty solid movie. Um, the only problems I really have with it is just the CGI and the shaky cam, which, again, is, you all know this by now. For those that know me and watch my videos, you know that that's my biggest complaint with modern cinema. You know, you do not have to shake the camera around. You know, just, you know, I know why they do it. Because they think it looks more realistic. In actuality, it doesn't. It makes it look like shit. You cannot see what's going on. It's not steady. It's not focused. It's annoying. And CGI, I know why they do CGI. Number one, because it is safer. It's safer than doing all the stunts and the explosion. Like, I get why they do that. That part, I understand why they do that. Um, but, you know, again, I've said this in previous reviews of this franchise. I've said this in many other videos. It's 2015, almost 2016, and the CGI still looks like shit. I don't get it. And that's all I'm going to say about that because, you know, I, I have a tendency to go off and stuff. But those are really my two complaints about the film. Um, that's it. But other than that, you know, I think it's a solid movie. I really liked it. Um, the story, I thought was... I liked the settings. Um, I liked how the movie took place in London and German, like all over Europe. I really liked that. That was pretty cool. Um, I know that I've kind of complained about that in the past. Like, you know, why do all these action films take place in Europe, like, but for this one, I liked, I thought it was cool, because this one, you know, all the other movies took place pretty much in America, except, uh, three was Tokyo, so that was cool, four, they kind of went back and forth between Mexico, which I thought that was cool, five, it was in Rio, so I liked how they started to, you know, expand towards the end of the, the franchise, you know, uh, yeah, five was Rio, this is Europe, uh, Seven is kind of all over the place, which I thought... That part about the movie I did enjoy. Um, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> oh, Brian, uh, Brian Taylor does not do the music for this? Hmm. That's interesting. I guess he was busy doing another movie at the time. Huh, I did not know that. Now I do. Um, but yeah, like I, like I said, I think it's a solid film. I liked how... Well, let's just do the story. The story of the film, basically, at the end of five, you know, everybody got away. Excuse me. And, you know, Vin Diesel and Paul Walker and uh, Mia, his, now they're married. Now they have a son, which I like that. You know, that was cool. I liked how they added that in there. It was, it was cool to see that stuff. Um, and uh, Elena, Vin Diesel's girlfriend, the, the lady cop from the fifth film, they... I forget where they... I think it was somewhere in the Dominican Republic. Again, it's been a few months since I've watched this movie. And I've only really seen it a couple of times. I saw it in theaters. Um, I think I watched it two or three times at home. So I haven't watched these movies. Like yeah, The first film is the one I've seen the most. Um, but And five. I think that one and five are the ones I watch the most. Because those are the ones I enjoy the most. But... I think it's somewhere in the Dominican Republic. They go there because there's no extradition um, treaty. So The Rock shows up and, you know, he, you know, Vin Diesel thinks he's getting arrested. But he's like, no, you know, I need your help. You know, there's this gang that ripped off a military convoy, you know, and I, you know, I need you to help me bring them down. And, the, of course, The Rock, Vin Diesel's like, no. And then he gives him a picture of Letty, and that's when, you know, he decides to go at it alone. But uh, Brian won't let him. He's like, no, you know, you're not going to do this alone. You know, we're going to bring her home together. Because remember, in Part 4, Letty was working undercover to get Dominic and everybody's name clear. 
You know, so they start to go after him, and they get the team back together, which, again, I thought was cool. You know, they get they get Tyrese and Ludacris, Sun Kang, and Gal Gadot back together, and now they have the help of the government, you know, the, the U.S. government, to help bring these guys down. And, of course, you know, things don't go as planned, um, because in their first encounter, you know, Letty shoots Vin Diesel, and... Um, you know, she gets into a fight with Gina Carano, and I know people complained about, I know she's not on the, no, she's not on the cover, um, I know people complained about Gina Carano, but I don't mind her in this movie, I know she did that movie Haywire, and I think they dubbed her voice for the whole movie, which doesn't make sense, I mean, I know they, they've done that with, like, Arnold, they did that with Hercules in New York, but it's, it's a shitty movie, so that one I really don't care, um, but I know they they do. It's not new. They've done that before. But I heard Haywire wasn't much of a movie. But I don't mind Gina Carano. I I, I think she's attractive. I know she's. I believe she's retired from fighting. Um, but you know, I, I think she's pretty. I mean, I don't I don't mind her. But I didn't mind her in this movie. I know she's supposed to be in the Kickboxer remake, which they released a thirty second teaser, and I didn't mind the teaser. I mean, it didn't look awful but i i still i mean you don't need to remake kickboxer i might see it just because uh van damme's in it you know just to see how he is in the film um but we'll see but i didn't mind gina carano you know so they get into her and gina gina carano and letty get into a fight which i didn't mind that um you know and then there's the the chase through London where he talked, you know, Vin Diesel talks to Letty and she doesn't believe him and stuff. Um, and then, of course, everybody remembers the action scene on the bridge with the tank, which, again, really crummy CGI. But, I mean, five, you know, I know five had some pretty bad CGI, but I think it kind of gets, you know, progressively worse as the movies go along. But that's just my opinion. That scene right there. But... Yeah, that's just my opinion. I think the CGI gets bad as it goes along. Like, 5, again, it had shitty CGI, but I think it looked kind of a little bit better than this one. And then 7 just had some pretty atrocious CGI. But, again, you know, that's the next video, which you will hear more about that. But, yeah, you know, and again, I don't need to go into big details because, again, you know, there's just this military gang, these bad guys, which are basically the evil versions of... Uh, the good guys, you know, Tyrese, and he, and that's what he said, you know, he's like, we're fighting the evil versions of us, and I like the scene with the candy, the candy machine where it's not coming out, and the rock just shoots it, like, there's really good humor in the film, same with Five, there's good moments, um, in the film, which I like, you know, and of course you find out Gina Carano's working for the bad guys, and there's the ending with the plane, which I know everybody complains about that. They're like, why did it take so long for the plane to get there? And, you know, it's like, whatever. It's just, they were trying to span it out. You know, it's the ending of the movie. You know, come on now. And Tyrese, you want me to shoot down a plane? <laughs> you know, like you said in 7, you know, um, first I had to jump off a tank. Which, okay, then you want me to shoot down a plane. Which I wasn't cool with, but I did it anyway, you know. Just fun, you know, I, again, I really enjoy Tyrese, and, and yeah, all the, you know, five, six, seven, you know, they have good moments, they have humorous moments in there, which I enjoy, you know, that's the thing, you know, I think a lot of these films, I'm glad that the Marvel films do it, that's the one thing I can say about one of the big differences between Marvel and DC, I know DC is really getting behind with the, the movie part, but they're kicking ass with the TV shows, but... You know, in the movie part, you know, at least I can say that the Marvel films are fun. Like, all, pretty much all of them are fun movies. There's good humor. There's, you know, moments where it relaxes from the tension and the action. And there's funny moments. Like, I really enjoyed that. You know, Avengers Age of Ultron had some really good humor. Um, Ant-Man had really good humor in there. Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy had many funny moments in the movie. That's the one thing I can I can say. Uh, enough about that. I don't want to make this all about Marvel. But 
Yeah, just, you know, really good humor in these films, you know, 5, 6, and 7. Again, Tyrese and Ludacris, I like how they always go back and forth, and there's some really funny dialogue in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some good scenes, you know, the scene where Vin Diesel goes in the pawn shop and beats the guy through the window, and uh, where Gina Carano and Gal Gadot, you know, they're messing with the guy, and... Um, Ludacris and uh, Tyrese are like placing bets and everything. You know, it's just funny, good moments, funny moments, um, good stuff in these movies. And yeah, I like the the race through London. You know, that was cool. I liked all the action scenes, like the the scene at night where they go after them and you know they think they're in the building and they blow the building up and they chase after them. You know, good choreography. Yeah, of course there's CGI in there, but good stunts. You know, good. Uh, choreography with the driving and everything you know it looks good apart from the cgi but again you know the cgi close-ups okay you're obviously not going to have an actor do the stunts because it's very very dangerous you know and any stunt is dangerous you know there are people who say well this is safe it's not safe any stunt is dangerous you can get killed on any kind of stunt it doesn't matter what stunt you're doing i'm not picking my nose i'm just scratching it because freaking mustache hairs get in there and tickle it and I'm not picking my nose people trust me I'm way beyond the picking nose uh, stage I'm just playing around but yeah I mean obviously of course you know CGI they're they're gonna do it for a lot of different reasons but you know whatever but yeah I mean I like Luke Evans as the bad guy I know he's played bad guys before but I didn't mind you know the action scene on the plane you know, when uh, Vin Diesel and The Rock team up, I was like, yeah, you know, this is awesome. You know, they're they're fighting, they're teaming up, they're taking these guys out, which I liked. Um, you know, good, some good action in there, some good fights. Yeah, it does suck that they killed off Gal Gadot, but I mean, now she's going to go on to play Wonder Woman and all this. So, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, you know, they bring the plane down and, you know, some good, so there's, you know, a good mixture of, of practical and CGI for the different action scenes and stuff. But, um, you know, then Letty comes to her senses. You know, I know before that, I know I'm going all over the place. But again, you know, it's Fast and Furious 6. By this point, you know, people know. Um, you know, so Letty comes back to them. You know, she's starting to remember some things. And then the last part of the movie, you know, they go back home. You know, The Rock shows up and hands them the papers and they're all free you know they're all good to go um elena shows up and and you know tells dominic it's okay you know i'll live you know now you 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 know this woman is your the love of your life is back and everything that's okay you know and they sit down and they have dinner and you know tyrese grabs the food and he's like well you know you know house rules you got to say grace the first one to grab the food which makes sense which is funny and, you know, they say a little prayer, and that's it, you know, the end of the movie. Then, of course, the tag scene with Jason Statham, which I'll get more into in uh, 7, which I'll talk more about that, and also how they wrapped it up, which, again, I thought they did a really good job, which I'll get to. But, yeah, again, I think 6 is a pretty solid film. Again, it's the only one I got to see in theaters, but that's okay. Um, you know, again, I don't like to go to the movies too often, um, if ever. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm actually kind of glad I saw this in theaters. You know, it's really the last. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, the camera battery died, uh, like I've been saying in, in recent videos. <clears throat> this camera has definitely seen better days. It's definitely time to upgrade and get a new one. Um, probably not going to happen anytime soon, but it's definitely time to get a new camera. As I was trying to finish up um, talking about this movie, Furious 6, um, I'm glad that I saw it in theaters because it's really one of the last Paul Walker films um, because after this movie uh, I think the only other film of his that went to theaters was Brick Mansions um, which I really liked that movie and then also uh, Hours did not go to theaters but I really enjoyed that movie I think it's one of Paul Walker's best films in my opinion and I know parts of Furious 7 he's in but this is really one of the last movies that he's in the whole thing you know to go to theaters so yeah, I'm kind of glad that I was able to catch it in theaters but there you go so that's Rob is just trying to finish up before the camera decided to die and here we are again finishing this part I know I'm in a different environment now now I'm downstairs but 
Oh well. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, to just film this quick little edit so you'll see the jump and the change and everything. But as I was trying to finish up, the uh, camera decided to uh, fuck off and die, so to speak. But oh well. So any, anyway, folks, I hope that you enjoyed my review of Furious 6. And next I'm going to be talking about a film that I ultimately felt was lackluster, Furious 7. So stay tuned for that.